As you probably know, pumps in once human cannot be saved in a blueprint. The only thing we can do is simplify the process of installing them on a ready-made build as much as possible, and I've solved this problem for you. The new acid factory consists of two modules, each producing 576 units of acid per day. You can install an additional module with six rainwater collection systems on the roof. When fully equipped, the factory will produce 1,152 units of acid per day, or 1,728 units if you build the three simplest modules. But the most important thing is that this acid factory can be saved in a blueprint and very easily reinstalled. I will explain the building process step by step, and I ask you to listen very carefully because there are many important details. Before we start, let me remind you of the basic acid production math. Each osmosis water purifier can produce 240 units of impure acid per hour. To fill its production capacity, it needs 480 units of polluted water per hour, which requires 10 water pumps. Each brewing barrel can process up to 120 units of impure acid, so to process 240 units, you need to build two barrels. Simply put, each module will consist of one water purifier, 10 pumps, and two brewing barrels, which is easy to remember. If you need a more detailed breakdown of the math, check out my previous video about building a similar factory from the tip on your screen. I also remind you that pumps should be placed far from bodies of water. Otherwise they will extract dirty and polluted water at the same time, and you will get a mess. If your pumps are far from the shore but are still extracting dirty water, you might need to move your base to another contaminated area. Now let's build. Enable grid snap by pressing caps lock. Build a platform of three small foundations along the grid, and install stairs on both sides. If you can't place the stairs, you should rotate the problematic foundation using the mouse wheel after disabling grid snap, or reinstall it entirely. On one of the side foundations install an additional platform with four small half walls and one small ceiling. This platform will be needed for installing water tanks. We have to build it this way because if the foundation is raised even slightly, the game will treat it as a separate structure, and the factory won't be savable in a blueprint. Place four small square walls on the platform as shown in the video. This will be the section for the water tanks, and there's an important nuance here. Many players have complained that their water tanks do not fit inside the box of small square walls. In fact, they fit there perfectly. The problem lies in the incorrect placement of the walls themselves. When you rotate them with the mouse wheel, they slightly change their position. If your walls are facing inward, there really is not enough space for the water tank, so make sure they are facing outward. Now extend the lower platform to both sides. Disable grid snap and place the osmosis water purifier as close to the wall as possible, exactly as shown in the video. Then enable grid snap again and install two brewing barrels on the front foundation. Now, between the water purifier and the brewing barrels, you should place the water tank. Rotate the tank, so that the faucet faces the brewing barrels. If you've done everything correctly, it will fit without any issues. If there isn't enough space, disable grid snap and manually adjust the placement. After this, you can remove the auxiliary foundations. Don't forget to connect the osmosis water purifier to this water tank, since we're gonna store impure acid there. Next place two tanks on top of each other in the vertical section, and make sure that their faucets are facing the same direction. Each tank has two slots for pipe connections, one at the top, and one at the bottom. If you have easy access to the bottom slot, connecting pipes will be much easier. Pure water which is required for acid production, will be stored in the bottom tank, so you need to connect it to the brewing barrels. Polluted water will be stored in the top tank, and should be sent to the osmosis water purifier to be processed into impure acid. Now let's add a control panel. Remove the stairs. Place three switches and one wall terminal which will receive power, on the wall. If you want to hide the wires, move the terminal inside the structure, and place it on the wall above the water purifier. After this, you can reinstall the stairs. The first switch will control the brewing barrels, the second switch is for controlling the osmosis water purifier, and the third switch will allow you to turn the water pumps on and off as needed. Build magic shelves for the water pumps using small ceilings as shown in the video. They are magic because it's extremely easy to install water pumps on them. As you remember we need 10 water pumps, and this is the number the build was designed for. Connect the last switch to one of the pumps, then chain connect all the pumps with wires. As for the pipes, there is a problem. You can't connect more than 10 pipes to one facility, so let's connect two pumps directly to the osmosis water purifier and the remaining eight to the top tank, which will serve as a storage for polluted water. 
This way, the tank will have one available connection left, and you will need it later. Our acid factory is ready to go, and will produce 576 units of acid per day. To achieve this performance, you will have to manually fill with impure acid all four slots of each brewing barrels. Now you can save this factory in a blueprint. As you can see, the game does not save the water pumps, but that is not a problem. You can easily reinstall them on the ready-made structure, you will only need to reconnect the pipes and wires. It is very important to carefully place the blueprint along the grid, otherwise you will not be able to place pumps properly with grid snap enabled. You can build separate copies of this basic module at your base, to double or even triple your acid production, increasing it to 1728 units per day. I've already started working on a compact build which will produce this amount of acid, and you won't miss it if you subscribe to the channel. However you can also build an upgraded version, that will produce 1152 units of acid per day. To do this, you just need to expand the structure, and install all the same facilities in exactly the same way. This won't be difficult because you will need to build an exact copy of the previous module, which means you just need to follow the same steps. I'm showing you all the steps again in time lapse because many viewers of my previous building guides had problems, so I hope you succeed this time. The control panel for this factory should be organized slightly differently, dividing the switches into three groups of two each. If you want to hide the wires, you can still move the wall terminal inside the structure. As you can see I install the wide stairs, only after installing the brewing barrels and switches, to avoid overlap issues. The right group will control the brewing barrels. Connect two brewing barrels to each switch in this group. The switches in the left group should be connected to the left and right osmosis water purifiers respectively. The central switches will control the pumps. This way, you'll be able to turn on and off each group of facilities separately as needed. For example you could turn off half the pumps, or even an entire module, if you urgently need power for something else. Pumps can be installed on this factory just as easily as on the previous one. You just need to enable grid snap and carefully place them on the magic shelves on both sides. After that, connect them to the central switches, 10 pumps to each. You can of course use one switch for each group or even for the entire factory, but I would still recommend having some control over individual systems, it is always useful. And of course don't forget to connect the pumps to the top water tanks. I remind you that no more than 10 pipes can be connected to one tank, which means two pumps from each module need to be connected directly to the osmosis water purifiers in any case. The left pumps need to be connected to the left upper tank, and the right pumps, to the right one respectively. Now the acid factory is fully operational, and you can save it in a blueprint. The pumps still won't be saved, but you can easily reinstall them. This factory will produce 1152 units of acid per day, but reaching full production capacity will take some time. Such a factory consumes 260 watts of power in total, and each individual module requires 130 watts. If you are faced with a lack of energy, you should use deviation energy generators and 6 electric yield deviations. This will allow you to produce more than 300 watts of power, and there is already a separate video about this on the channel. You can also add an extra module with 6 rainwater collection systems, which will not interfere with reinstalling the pumps, fits well into the design, and allows you to save energy. First, on the side of the control panel, I attach a new section using small triangles. This section looks like half a hexagon, and later we will place there an additional water tank. To install the rainwater collection systems as compactly as possible, you will need a lot of additional supports, so be careful and do everything exactly according to the instructions. I am using wooden parts as temporary supports on purpose, so that you can easily distinguish them. We are going to install 6 rainwater collection systems on 6 small square ceilings. Initially it is impossible to do this, because the game requires more space. That is why we need all these supports. You must temporarily expand the platform, and then the game will allow you to install rainwater collection systems without problems. Place them exactly as shown in the video. When their output slots face the same direction, these facilities can be placed closer to each other. If you did everything correctly, you will also be able to build a parapet from small half walls. The role of this parapet is purely decorative, but it's also a part of the design. After that, all the temporary wooden supports can be removed. The module is almost ready. We only have to finish building a small section for the water tank, and here you will face the same problem. There is not enough space to install the water tank, so you will have to use the temporary support again. All six rainwater collection systems must be connected to the bottom slot of this water tank. 
The water tank itself can be connected to existing tanks with polluted water, or directly to osmosis water purifiers. As you can see, you can still easily install 20 pumps on a fully finished structure, and it won't take more than 2 to 3 minutes. You just need to enable grid snap, and then arrange them on magic shelves. The finished factory can be saved in a blueprint. Even though the pumps are still not saved, it is much more convenient than building everything from scratch each time. You can also add some decoration. For example you can use different colors of light to mark switches. However do not save a blueprint with decorative parts, only if you have a clean one with no decor. Power for this factory needs to be supplied to the wall terminal, and pure water to the lower water tanks. To make the build look as neat as possible, you can add an additional wall terminal through which the factory will connect to the generators, and a wall-mounted pump that will take pure water and distribute it between the lower water tanks. This pump does not require power and is only needed as a slot for connecting a water pipe. Not long ago I published a separate detailed guide on building a water purification station for contaminated areas, so you should not have any problems with pure water production. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new interesting builds and guides. As always thank you for watching and, bye.